We need to talk about Windows. Or more specifically, we need to talk about how Python gets built on Windows and how the process can be improved. I'm Zach Grant. I'm Active States, VP of Community and Marketing, and I'm here to introduce Sean Lowry, who's the team lead for language engineering at Active State. Before we get into Sean's presentation, let's talk about Active State quickly. Or to frame it differently, why is Active State credible to talk on this subject? We've been building free and open source language runtimes for about 20 years now, and also offering enterprise grade support for them. On the Python front, we are one of the founding members of the Python Software Foundation, and our team members have contributions in the Python core. We make Active Python, which is a cross platform Python runtime that bundles many of the dependencies that enterprises need for uh, running their software. And we have that runtime available for the big three platforms, Mac, Linux, Windows, as well as big iron platforms and other platforms that enterprises need. We also provide post end of life maintenance and support for Python 2. And this is primarily meant for enterprises who can't yet migrate to Python 3 for one reason or another. A lot of our work over the last couple of years has focused on taking our skills, experience, and tooling that we use for enterprise builds of Python and other languages and converting them into a platform. Not surprisingly, we call it the Active State platform. It lets you build custom cross-platform runtimes where you choose the dependencies that you need and you get leaner distributions that have got a smaller attack surface we do the heavy lifting in the back end, like uh, automatic dependency resolution, where our solver runs through and looks for um, all of the possible combinations of dependencies and their versions that satisfy your requirements. We support about 90% of the important Python packages and are adding more over time. You can use the platform via a web interface, a command line interface, and soon via an API. We support Python, Perl, and Tickle, with more languages coming soon. As we're adding an API, we'll also be adding an API for others to add their own languages and their own dependencies to the platform. So if you find in the future that we're missing a Python package you need, you can add it yourself. Accounts are free. You can sign up at platform.activestate.com. It's still in beta. And because there are tens of thousands of packages involved, and that's a lot of combinations, sometimes things don't work. And when they don't work, we ask you to jump onto community.activestate.com and let us know, and we'll do our best to address the issue. And lastly, the platform has got an early access program for Python-based open source projects. This is aimed at projects that need to distribute to Mac, Windows, and Linux, and that want a, a runtime for their project that, well, it could be to make it so that it's easier for your end users to get, get up and running with it. Maybe your end users aren't necessarily wanting to build the, uh, the project for themselves, or maybe they don't have the right skills, or maybe it's difficult on one of these platforms. It might be for your contributors to help them get up and running faster. Uh, it might be because um, you want more stable releases. Whatever your need is, uh, check out the program, activestate.com forward slash open hyphen source hyphen early hyphen access hyphen program and um, read through the benefits. And if you're interested, also go onto the forums and let us know and we'll do our best to onboard you. Now, with all of that background and context, um, I'd like to pass you on to Sean and hope that you find the presentation interesting and useful. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Sean Lingry. Before joining ActiveState, I was a long-time enterprise developer, either working within enterprises or developing software for them. So I feel everyone's pain. I'm the team lead for language engineering at ActiveState, and my job is to make things build. To create the part of our platform that actually performs the thousands of individual component builds our platform needs to be capable of. So I'm going to give you a brief outline of the Active State platform so you can see some of the challenges we face. It has a number of fundamental goals it needs to meet 
in order for us to provide developers and end users with something truly useful and for us to provide it in a cost-effective way. It's a build-as-a-service offering which goes beyond what traditional continuous integration systems can provide. It will allow you to build projects with any viable mix of open source language cores and packages from their ecosystems. It will allow you to create download and go runtime distributions for Linux, Mac, Windows and a range of big iron platforms and it will leverage prior builds to provide a fast, repeatable, smart, build-on-demand service. In order to provide this service reliably and to better serve developers and consumers alike, we're creating a set of core features which will apply to all our current and future builds of open source software. We won't be relying on external binaries because we have indemnification obligations and because we want every delivered runtime to be internally consistent. So we build everything from source. We'll be making it easy for you to keep up to date with the things you care about by managing dependencies all the way down. For example, if you have a Python package on PyPI, which depends on a C library, which is outside the Python ecosystem, we'll model that dependency alongside those that the package tells us about within PyPI. Our runtimes are intended to be download and go, so we'll deliver everything you need to use them, including DLLs and other things from outside the ecosystem, but we'll remove the scaffolding, unless you want it, to keep your runtime clean. The platform is designed to leverage our infrastructure to distribute the work of creating your runtime across a range of containers, virtual machines, and physical machines, and we leverage multiple tiers of caching to reuse build output where appropriate. Now I'm going to talk about building the Python core on our big three operating systems, Linux, MacOS, and Windows. Building Python on Linux is pretty simple. Once you've installed your distro's basic build tools, you probably have everything you need to create a working build. On a recent Linux, the versions of Python's dependencies installed on the system are probably OK. And even if they're not, you can probably get a working Python. Adding support for things like FFI and BSDDB can usually be done with a couple of extra calls out to the distro's packaging system. If you want, you can supply your own versions of Python's prerequisites easily and a decent range of versions will work well with any given version of Python. So let's take a look at a typical Linux build. Uh, it's a autoconf style build, so we'll have a configure script. And let's take a look at the help. As you can see, there's all sorts of options we can supply. We can tell it where to find OpenSSL. We can tell it where to find TickleTK. Uh, there are a whole bunch of options for pulling in system libraries too. We're going to go ahead and run configure just with the default options. And we'll speed this up a little bit so you don't have to watch it all. And it seems to have done pretty much the right thing, so now we're going to build it. And again, sped up for your viewing pleasure. So there we go, it's done a complete build. On macOS, things are a little bit locked down, but the Python build is pretty similar. Apart from having the one true way, the framework build, alongside the more traditional Unix build. Once you have Xcode installed, you're pretty much set. And thanks to Brew, you can install a range of Python's dependencies and custom versions. If you're happy to build the dependencies from source, and we are, you pretty much have the same choice of versions of dependencies that you have on Linux. Okay, so let's take a look at a Mac build. The only difference here is that we have the enable framework uh, option enabled, which gives us the one true way to build Python on Mac. And it seems we've done the right thing, so we'll go ahead and build it. Again, sped up for us. Again, pretty much the same as the Linux build. But we need to talk about Windows. With a native Visual Studio build system, deviating from the standard build 
is pretty difficult. Unlike Linux and Mac, your regular Windows install probably won't have what you need. Even if you have a developer setup with Visual Studio and all its bells and whistles, you probably still don't have what you need. And worse, you probably have versions of the tools which aren't best suited to the Python build. Unless you have the recommended version of Visual Studio, along with the specific workloads and the right Windows SDK, and in some cases the right mix of multiple SDK versions, you're unlikely to get a great build. It's almost mandatory to set up a clean machine or VM from scratch just to do the Python build. Luckily for us, ActiveState do just that for each version of Python that we build. Once you have your development environment set up, what to do about all those dependencies? Windows doesn't come with OpenSSL, bzip2, etc. Well, don't worry, the Python build system has you covered. The Visual Studio Python build system is structured with a number of Visual C++ projects. One for the core itself, a bunch of tests and ancillary projects, and a project each for each of the C library dependencies. OpenSSL, TickleTK, BZIP2, FFI, etc, etc. These projects allow you to build Python and its dependencies from source, and there are a number of batch files for automating the build from the command line, which ActiveState leverage to run unattended builds. First of these batch files you'll encounter is build.bat. This is the main entry point into the command line Python build system for Visual Studio, and it uses MS Build for the most part to build using the Visual C++ project files. It has options for configuring various build parameters, release, debug, some control over the core features, including one which allows you to exclude building of external source libraries like OpenSSL. But this also completely disables the features that depend on them. What if you actually want these features? Then, Get externals.bat comes to the rescue. It will download either source code or binaries where available for all the dependencies you need. Rather than going to the various home sites for each of these libraries, it will fetch specially repackaged zip archives from a special Git repository set up to host them, or for older versions, a subversion repository. It will, where possible, use an existing Python build to do the downloads, and if you don't have one, it can even helpfully download a Python build for just this purpose. Unfortunately, this approach comes with a number of downsides for people wanting to build Python from source and keep its dependencies up to date. Using the Visual Studio build system, the versions of the C library dependencies are fixed at release and can never be altered. Where the dependencies require security updates, for example, OpenSSL, these come more frequently than Python point releases, and users will quite often not be in a position to upgrade to the latest Python version simply to get fixes for its dependencies. External build systems like ActiveState have neither control over nor insight into Python's core dependencies on Windows. They're just a black box, hard-coded at release. This means we can't calculate an accurate Merkle tree for Python on Windows for caching purposes, and hence we can't reliably cache the build output for reuse. We end up rebuilding the Python core for every Windows build, which has cost implications in terms of compute time and disk space for Windows builds. Worse still, we can't guarantee consistency of versions for these dependencies for the same runtime across multiple operating systems. So let's have a look at a typical Windows build. We're going to ask for a 64-bit build using Visual Studio 2015. You can see that it's fetching the external dependencies. Again, we've sped this up so you don't have to watch the whole build, but you can see it's just basically going off and compiling everything. And it's done. 
We had an urgent need to be able to at least replace OpenSSL for our Python builds on a more frequent basis. In order to do this, we patch every version of the Python core with the replacement getexternals.bat, which downloads all the dependencies from the same cloud storage we use for all our other cached source code. For OpenSSL then, we download the version we need for our runtime and extract it into the same directory that the Python Visual C++ project expects it to be in, including the old version number. The build system then finds a newer version of OpenSSL to build in the directory it assumes is for the older version. For example, we may have unpacked version 1.0.2t in place of 1.0.2p. For some versions of OpenSSL, this also means reorganizing the source tree to match what the Visual C++ project expects. Obviously, this is less than ideal, and we'd need to replicate that for all the other core dependencies, so we're planning to use a different approach. We're planning to create a new Visual C++ and MS build system for Python, which is more flexible and can optionally use pre-built libraries for its dependencies. This will allow us to use the ActiveState platform to satisfy those dependencies, while still allowing other users to use the traditional build system or satisfy those dependencies any other way they choose. We plan to contribute this new build system to the Python community and hope that it will be accepted upstream as a way for us all to create the reliable, repeatable, upgradable builds we have on Linux and MacOS. For ActiveState, we'll be able to avoid patching the Python core and keep our Python distributions clean and compatible with the community build. And we hope to make them the best way for developers to get up-to-date, safe and secure releases in any version of Python. We're aiming for everyone to have a better experience with Python on Windows. Thank you.